Hi, I'm Vaughn Hinnom, president of the infamous or famous ASC and DC Club. This building uh, contains the oldest freestanding squash court in North America. Squash was invented around the 1800s when some boys at uh, Eton started hitting a ball around in the courtyard. And it started as a schoolboy sport. They played a couple of other schools and eventually grew in popularity. In 1915, the Faulkner cousins came back from Harvard and said, oh, we've discovered this wonderful game called squash. And they came back to Keene very enthusiastic about it and talked their dad into, um, into building a squash court, uh, which he did, and this is it. They put a squash court into a barn on their farm. The current site of the TD Bank North building on West Street. Squash is a pretty simple game. You have to hit the front wall. We take turns hitting the ball until one of us makes a mistake. Uh, there are lines at the top of the court. You can't hit the ball above the top. There's also a tin at the bottom, which is like the net in tennis. You can't hit the ball below that. After that, anything's in play. You can use the side walls or the back wall and uh, you can hit the ball before the bounce or after the bounce. My understanding is that the club was incorporated in 1958 as the ASC and DC club. Now that stands for Amalgamated Squash Chowder and Development Corporation. Go figure. Who came up with that name? I have no idea. <laughs> well, but it was a little bit of an exclusive group, and um, many of them uh, did not play squash. So it was called the Squash Club for a while, but the people that uh, just liked to get together to socialize, because they had three or four parties every year, and uh, they did not want to be left out so that they added chowder and development. I was president at a time when we needed to move the club. The Faulkner family sold their property and the choice was either to move the court or to sell it to somebody. A group of Faulkner friends who'd been playing squash in the court for many years decided that it was a historic building, should be preserved, and in order to do that, they had to move it. And the question is how to do it and where would we get the money to do it? The people who played squash in this uh, court were very close friends of the Faulkners. And, uh, you know, they're full of uh, keen, influential keen names, Colonies, Browns, Putnams, owners of many of the big industries in town. But because of the fact that so many of the members at that time um, were well-known figures in Keene. The bank uh, lent us the money. All of the electrical and telephone lines had to be taken down because the building is so tall. The club was moved from there ultimately to its site on 80 Martin Street between uh, Markham Homage and MPB. Well, the club itself is very eccentric and everyone has lots of different personalities and Vaughn is loves to just make a riot out of everything. There are so many things that make this club unique. We do have some quasi-modern features in this club. For example, if you need to go to the bathroom, there's a porta potty outside. Everyone had to have good bladder control because we didn't have a uh, porta potty out there for many, many years. I can tell you that. In the late fall, winter, and early spring, uh, heat in the court. Here's how you do it. You call the squash club. You then enter a secret code known only to the members, then another code, and then the heat turns on automatically. Voila! You arrive at the court and it's nice and warm. There are some other quite unique physical features of the club, such as the beams. Uh, beams do not figure into most other clubs. Any self-respecting squash court does not have beams going across the ceiling. Purely architectural issue. We've wrestled with it for years and decided to just leave them. You had to learn how to either 
be sure that you were just below the beams or you had to thread the beams. And uh, that's unique. So here, if you hit the beam, it's a let, and that means a duel over. One of the other traditions that the club used to have that we no longer uh, subject new members to is that there was a small opening in the tin. And uh, as part of the membership initiation, new members were required to take off their jackets at the annual meeting and exit through the cheater. Uh, this practice was discontinued for many reasons, not the least of which is the opening is quite small. I use required in quotes, in quotes because uh, everybody couldn't do it. That was part of the initiation process. One had to be able to fit through the hole. <laughs> when I joined the club, when I first moved to Keene, I actually did crawl through. Uh, but I'm not sure too many people crawled through after then. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do cause, is get up and look at the ball machine. The annual meeting is where all decisions are made for the club. And the annual meeting was uh, uh, put together as the big social event of the year. The president of the organization was always the host. We should entertain a motion to open the 64th annual meeting, 64, 1958. Open the 64th meeting? Yes, second. second. Great. Okay, so I uh, had the good fortune to be elected president in 2012. Now, it sounds like a great honor, but the reality is no one else really wanted to do it. And by the way, we now have political influence in the city of Keene. If most of you uh, don't know, Brian is a member of city council. So uh, we are a connected organization. One of the traditions I started at the club is to set the tone for the coming year. And so each year I select a dictator, a bad president, to model our administration after. You know, we've got this new leadership team and, you know, we need inspiration for how we're going to rule. So uh, this fine uh, gentleman is the longest serving president of any country ever. He ousted his uncle in 1979 uh, when his uncle began killing off members of his family and he killed his uncle. And we've learned many interesting facts about some really heinous leaders, such as Kim Jong-un, or Xi Jinping, or Idi Amin. Um, so those are just a few of the people that we try to emulate our administration after. According to this one American journalist called him a worse dictator than Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe, which is really making quite a statement. The country has been cited as having one of the worst human rights uh, records in the world. So, anyone know this esteemed president? And what country? Equatorial Guinea, Teodora Obiang Unjima Mubasogo. Uh, now this is a report, it's a rumor that he eats opposition leaders he executes to gain their spiritual strength. Thus far, uh, we've not been able to follow through on executing any member for a transgression, as many of these uh, leaders do. So, I, I think this is something, as you're considering voting for this election group, this is, you know, the, the model that we're going to try to follow in the next year. So. Don't offend me, because I might have to eat you. Is that the soup next year? <laughs> but what really makes uh, this meeting quite unique is its uh, dedication to singing uh, in absolutely terrible melody, the fireman's song. I really have no idea. It's really totally arcane. Uh, nobody knows how it started. No, it has absolutely no connection with squash, with uh, banquets, with anything that anybody can think of. 
but for years that's been sung and um, the people who stood up and led it for many years were not singers. <laughs> I can't really repeat that uh, on air right now, but it's truly yeah. something to behold. <laughs> I think we should all rise. You know, squash has been a, a growing sport. Every year I've seen more and more kids join it. And something that's really accelerated the growth of squash in the States is uh, colleges playing the game. So there are 40, about 40 colleges that have a varsity sport. Uh, in other words, a coach that's paid full time and a team that travels for matches. And the teams are able to recruit good squash players and because of this there's now a large junior population getting better at squash looking to improve and looking to play in college I think it's fun just because it's different than what I've played in the past as a kid and during school and stuff I don't know it's addicting you just get in there whack a ball around it is a game which is played with two people so you don't so you don't have to gather a big gang to have a um, to have a match. It's very condensed. You can get a lot of exercise in a very short amount of time. We have the great fortune that Gary Gargan has uh, very nicely agreed to help out at the club. He adds a lot of knowledge. He adds uh, a really good way for beginners to begin to learn squash. I thought I was all right when I first started. Uh, then I had a lesson with Gary. Uh, that, that changed fast. Gary whooped my ass. But I, I learned lots. It was a very informational lesson, and uh, he's a very good teacher. I'm the head squash pro at Squash West in Massachusetts. I also coach the Tufts University team, and I've been playing squash for about 30 years. My dad taught me to play, and I never thought I'd do it professionally, but this is what I do. You know, this, this court has uh, definitely grown it's got a place in my heart because it's just down the road for me and normally I have to go travel over to Massachusetts or somewhere to a, a bigger squash center where there are more courts and play there. Um, the very cool thing about this little building is it's just freestanding, it's just a squash court, it's by itself. The heating, you have to phone this and turn it on and the club is sort of, it's old and it's the floors are not exactly flat and there's paint chipping off the walls and there's just like you know the beams and there's so many different characteristics about the court which just make it interesting and different to play on and you know once you play chair a little while and you got used to it there, there's no other court like it it's an absolutely unique experience you, you think about this I mean you know this is a court that was built around 1900. I think the club has lasted such a long time because it's dedicated to the idea that uh, its main purpose is to have fun. This club is a real gem. There's just nothing like it in the world I think and definitely not in the United States and it's really got some nice traditions the people and just the wackiness of the sport and the people coming together is what makes it an enjoyable experience. And it makes for just a really great competitive atmosphere that's a lot of fun, uh, that is fabulous exercise. Um, I think squash and I think the chowder house as it's referred to colloquially is uh, really just a superb game and this is so unique uh, for Keene, New Hampshire.